Hello everybody. It's Friday and we haven't looked at anything written by the Apostle Paul. Hey, we got to do something about that, right? And we're going to do it right now. We're going to take a look at the last chapter in Philippians. We've been reading through Paul's letter to the Philippians the last couple of weeks in church and also talking about them here in our uh, little walks through the woods and our meditations and now we're, we're it's coming to an end this was paul's most favorite church that he started and he couldn't really stay with them for too long as we saw earlier he kind of got kicked out of philippi and uh he still would have been languishing there in jail if he hadn't left so he left but he always communicated with them, always did. And this church is one that financially supported him in his missionary efforts further to the West in Rome. So it's kind of a neat deal, kind of a neat deal. He, and they had a special place in his heart. But he finishes up his letter with some words of encouragement. Uh, one of the things that he did was he urged two of the women to kind of uh, work things out, whatever differences of opinion that they had he felt it might be getting in the way of the work of the church and also the growth of the church so it was Eudea and Syntyche he said hey come on you know be, be of the same mind you know whatever is come whatever's come between you just just work it out because that that's what God wants for us now we don't know what it was whether it was a theological difference, it was uh, probably maybe the way they were doing worship, whatever it was. We don't know. But you know what it does tell us? These women were leaders of the church. Now remember, Philippi is a Roman colony. And it had a lot of Greek influence there. It was a part of Macedonia. That was part of the Greek Empire. So when Rome took over and they brought in their government to take over they let the cultures pretty much do their own thing as long as they obeyed the roman government and that led also to the way things were handled in the church women were leaders in society there and they became leaders in the church without their influence and their leadership the church never would have got going it's also interesting that this is a congregation, as we mentioned before, a church that helped support Paul. They sent Paul money to help him out while he was doing his work in Rome and, and other places uh, to the west of Philippi. So it's kind of a neat, kind of a neat uh, relationship that he had with him. But I, I'm reading from the translation, the message here, and I really liked some of the things he had to say right at the end of Philippians. Like this one, celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in Him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the Master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Paul really did expect Jesus to come again soon and he anticipated it and that's why he always had this sense of urgency about what he said telling the people oh, we have to to live that life that that shows we believe we have to live that life that shows that we care we have to live that life in total expectation that Jesus is going to show up again in our doorstep at any time any time that influenced a lot of the different writings that he had, and we can see that when we get to it and some of the other things down the road here. But, okay, but I like that. Celebrate God all day. Uh, and how about this? Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. No. No, don't worry, pray. That's what he said. Let God know your concerns. And before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. That sense of God's wholeness, that's God's peace. 
That's the way the, the message translates it. And it's a good thing because peace, the Greek word for peace is arene. Find that about a hundred times in the New Testament. But it's based on the Hebrew word shalom, which you find about 200 times in the Older Testament. And it carries that sense of well-being, total well-being, wholeness. Peace doesn't mean the absence of conflict. If anything, it's what you have, no matter what your situation is. Even if you're in dire straits, even if there is fighting and conflict all around you, you can still have peace. God's peace, God's wholeness. And how do we do that? By just giving it up in prayer to God. And here's how he ends it. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Wow. Could we sure use that? in our context in the United States these days. Thinking on things that are pure and noble and wholesome and wow, we're surely, we're sorely, not surely, well surely too, but sorely not doing that too well in our context, especially as we're going through quite a contentious political season right now. When we do that, God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Again, he's talking about the word peace. In the Greek, it's peace. But again, it's also that idea of wholeness. His most excellent harmonies. Bringing it all together in our lives as his faithful people. Pretty much that summarizes Paul's letter to the Philippians. He brings together a lot of what he's talked about previously in the letter and just ties it all up nice and neat. Nice little package. Beautiful little ribbon and bow on top and delivers it to the Philippian church. It's that peace that we all seek, especially now through everything that we're going through in this nation it's that peace that sense of wholeness and well-being that god can offer to you and to me let's just lift it up in prayer let's revel in god's goodness and graciousness toward us blessings be with you this day